what does Tyson Bagent being good or competent mean for the Bears as a franchise moving forward? If you like go back and you watch a Green Bay offense two years ago with Luke Getze there and Matt LaFleur, it does look similar to, similar to what Tyson Bagent did, right? So is that realistically, if Tyson Bagent does transcend scheme fit and is just a good quarterback or at least a solid quarterback, there's no issue here. There's no problem with Tyson Bagent being a good player. This is one of those times where too many cooks in the kitchen is almost a good thing because none of the cooks are good. So Justin Fields getting his fifth-year option picked up, Tyson Bagent becoming the, the backup quarterback, and then whoever you draft in the first, second, or third round for the next regime or whatever, that is, that is a fine quarterback room. You have a four-year starter. You have a second-year starter with tons of plays and tons of experience, a four-year college starter, record holder. And then you've got your young guy that you can work on as a project. That gives you another year to for Ryan Poles, buy you time. And an interesting quarterback room, which I prefer because I don't necessarily think that old quarterbacks transcend or translate into mentors. I think just having four, three smart guys in the room who understand a scheme is really what you need. Hopefully Tyson Bajan can basically give the Bears more time to find the guy. If Tyson Bajan's the guy, congratulations, you are one of the luckiest right. two teams in right. all of football. And it buys you some, some flexibility to not force draft picks at the quarterback position. You can right. get a King's ransom for the first or second overall pick, and you can build a wide receiver room. Tyson Bajan throwing to Marvin Harrison Jr. and having Olu Faluashan, I think is this how you pronounce, as a left tackle. I'd be more comfortable with that than Caleb Williams getting his brains beaten in, throwing DJ Moore for 16 games.